I think one of the most common questions I get asked in all of my videos is, Simon, how do I make sure I'm not buying a fake golf club online, whether it's Facebook, eBay, whatever? And I can completely understand the hesitance, but here's my top five tips how to know you're getting the real deal. It's simple, however, this is more to stop you guys actually getting scammed when selling stuff as well. Okay, number four is looking like a prime spot. Let's hope I don't drop the camera. I made a video Callaway Mavericks. They were selling them at like 180, 170 on Face Bay. Mary will literally chop my nuts off if I drop and break another camera. And if I don't reply the first time, send it again. Be like, Simon, you, you're a YouTuber. You've got nothing to do. Reply to me and then do it again. Urgent. Auction ends in a minute. Let me know. Guys, how you doing? Welcome back to a brand new video. Simon down here at Sanford Springs Golf Club. A lovely afternoon. Don't think the weather's supposed to stay like this though for the rest of the week. So I'm out in the afternoon, getting a bit of filming done. Um, and as I said, one of the most common questions I always get, um, it must be four or five a video going, either a story saying someone's bought a fake golf club or them saying, I don't want to step into the second hand market because I'm worried that if I spend the money uh, uh, on a really good deal because obviously I do get deals all the time and sometimes it could be believed that it's too good to be true which I completely understand however this video is kind of reassure you as well as stay away from a few items as well as obviously steer towards others on if you spend the money on it are you getting the real thing uh, and you're not going to get scammed out of your money um, so if you wouldn't mind leaving this video a like subscribing if you are new to the channel Let's get straight into it. So lo and behold, the idiot that is me has forgotten both of his tripods to do any kind of filming this afternoon. But we're not gonna give up, we're gonna persevere. So if everything looks very low angled through the next two videos that you see on my channel, this be the reason why. Okay, top tip number one, come in from that table. <laughs> Okay, number one, and it's quite simple, however, this is more to stop you guys actually getting scammed when selling stuff as well. And I kind of learned this the hard way, um, uh, which all got resolved. eBay is always covered by buyer's protection. And this is why it's my top tip. The reason I'm not really worried, even if I am on eBay and I get someone that's never sold before or only just signed up their account, if the club never turns up, or um, if it turns up and, well, let's be honest, it is a fake, I message eBay and then that money goes on hold and then after a bit of investigation, a few photos, whatever, you've then got your money back. It's actually in reverse. Sellers are always at a loss when it comes to PayPal, um, uh, especially when it comes to business services because nine times out of 10, PayPal and eBay are always gonna side with the buyer because it's buyer's protection. They want to be seen as uh, having a very safe way of buying stuff online and never pay friends and family to anyone on Facebook, Gumtree, Spock, whatever it might be, because you won't have that insurance. The reason I say, number one, this is actually a worse kind of effect for sellers rather than buyers, is because if someone gets a set of clubs from me, like they did, and they said, these clubs are fake, I'm gonna do my investigation, they automatically freeze the money through eBay. They go eBay, I think these items are fake, that money comes straight out of your account, it's on withhold. Um, uh, and here's my top tip, always take pictures of anything over 100 pounds, you should do this with anything, but this is what I've kind of learned. Always take pictures of everything you put into the box, serial numbers, heads, the lot because they could have a fake set the other side and they go, this is what turned up. And if you've got no evidence to say, actually, no, this is what I sent, then unfortunately eBay, PayPal are always gonna side with the buyer. Luckily, the person that said that my clubs were fake, even though I knew I bought them from a pro shop, so I knew they weren't and the serial numbers were there, I didn't take any photos. So I had to wait 30 days and because they didn't escalate any further, the money finally came out. For the buyers, that is why I've always got the confidence in eBay of buying anything is because nine times out of 10, they're gonna side with me over the seller. So that's kind of my top tip, number one, never pay friends or family, always pay business or services. There's a reason they get so much commission. There's a reason that they take such a big percentage because obviously you have that kind of insurance there. For the seller's point of view, always be safe, especially if you're selling like a drive of 300 pounds, take loads of photos, put it in the box, take a picture of the label. I mean, we've all got smartphones, it takes like two seconds, but it can save you a lot of money. And there are people that do want to, well, take your money. Oh, and get everyone to sign for it as well. Never 
send a golf club without a signature because again they could be like ah I've never arrived and then you got no proof right that's number one okay here's spot for top tip number two on top of that metal box that we normally use to look down the fairway here at Sanford Springs so you don't hit anyone on the head okay I'm literally gonna have to tiptoe for this one right top tip number two don't buy stupidly new stuff that comes out very cheap. I made a video, Callaway Mavericks. They were selling them at like 180, 170 on Facebay. Um, uh, and potentially you might see other ones on eBay. They're going to be knockoffs. Like if it's just come out and then two months later you're seeing all these golf clubs that are so cheap. Well, guess what? They're going to be fake. My advice is, is that I buy old stuff. I don't like buying premium stuff because A, that's not the value of the channel. But also... I can't really make that much money when I flip these clubs because if I spend £250 on a driver and sell it for 280 well that's 30 quid with a £250 investment. Old stuff is where it's at. They get weaned out. The fake stuff comes out, gets weaned out by either a pro or someone breaks it or someone notices it's fake and then they go through the whole process of top tip number one. So my biggest advice realistically is that the older you buy the more likely it's going to be real. Ping G10 it's going to be real. No company in the world is making fake Ping G10s at the moment to make 50 quid knockoffs because the margin's not there. If it's too good to be true, it normally is. Now you could risk it because of top tip number one, and that's kind of the golden rule. By all means, I bought a speed zone the other day, which you guys saw, for £180. That could be too good to be true, but because it's through eBay, I thought it doesn't matter, I might as well wing and pray. And for me, well, if it is fake, then it's probably a better video. All I would say is stick with the old stuff. That's more likely to be reliable if you don't want to faff around with returns and the rest of it going forward. Okay, top tip number three comes from my hand because we're on a roll and I don't want to stop. Feedback is very important. I have quite a few followers on eBay and I actually have quite a few people. I know a lot of you guys have found my eBay site and if you message me privately I will tell you because I'm not going to keep it from you if you go all that way out your own way. But I don't promote it myself and I get a lot of people that give me great feedback that don't even know that I have a YouTube channel. Feedback's very important, fast delivery, making sure it's genuine, anything that comes through my door. I'd like to know that I've got a very good eye. I see all the new stuff year on year out so it's easy for me to detect if it's fake or not. If you're buying someone or something from someone that's had zero feedback, been joined eBay in 2020 and they're selling a full set of sim clubs for 500 quid cash on collection, well you're probably going down the wrong route. If that person has got 100 feedback in terms of selling, the selling is important one, not just buying because loads of people buy stuff and get feedback, but it's the selling that's the important one. Go through the reviews, have a look. It's the only way I do it. Go through it and go, what's the kind of um, uh, positive feedback people are giving? And look at the negative. If someone goes, oh, mess me about and they refunded me, da da da, then maybe that is a caution. But it's kind of a twist number three because again, like me, if someone's only sold one thing on eBay and it's an unbelievable deal, part of me thinks they're just clearing out the garage and they really couldn't care. Therefore, they want to get the money quick, sell it, done, no problem. Therefore, and you can see a theme here, you always go back to top tip number one. If you don't care about wasting two weeks of club not turning up or club turning up and it's fake or whatever, you're going to get refunded regardless. If you don't want to go through all of that, make sure you go through the feedback, make sure the person is a very knowledgeable seller, quick delivery, well packaged, everything else, um, and you're not going to get messed about. But on the flip side of that, they're probably going to price the item quite well, reasonably I should say. Okay, number four is looking like a prime spot. Let's hope I don't drop the camera. Mary will literally chop my nuts off if I drop and break another camera. Well, I'm staying very close, <laughs> so I don't drop. Reflexes have to be on point. Luckily I'm a dad now, so I've got dad reflexes on my side. Top tip number four, and you should be doing this before you buy any clubs and it's the only way that I value anything and give people either prices, what I'll pay for it or um, uh, what I think I can undercut the market for so I know it's going to sell cheap because I always try and sell cheap under the market um, uh, just because I don't want to inflate prices. The prices are too inflated at the moment anyway. But you should go on sold and completed listings and look at the photos and um, majority of photos and the amount of people that are selling clubs at the moment you'll get a very good idea of what looks 
correct. Now, here's the things that you need to really pay attention to. The faces are incredibly crucial. Make sure, like, if you're buying a driver, the screws in the driver. Like, the Cobra Speed Zone, for example, and someone did message on that video again, how do you know it's not fake? It's very difficult. The machinery that goes into milling a golf club is so expensive. Therefore, especially the Crown as well, but this goes for the F9. You're more likely to get scammed by someone just not sending it to you and you bank transferring them and then selling you a fake Cobra. But like tailor made, the screws, like if it's a SIM or an M5, the screws are actually like painted on. They're not actually a screw. Callaway Maverick, for example, the paint is more brown, it's not white, and the strips and the lettering is a bit all over the place. I want to, in the future, buy all of last year's drivers that are fake just so that everyone can clearly see this is what the fake one looks like this is what the real one looks like but at the same time i still have to spend like 800 pounds even buy all the fake ones but that being said just look through the photos does your driver look just like those don't buy an item if there aren't clear photos if someone's just taking a picture of the top and the bottom of it but haven't shown you the face well guess what probably isn't the best route to go down on Going back to number three, you could get an unbelievable deal because no one else wants to take that risk. And then you can wait 20 days, I think you get in the picture, to then return it, everything else. Like, even though people say it's not returns, you can return it. It's not, it's like, it's not like in 30 days you go, actually, I don't like it. I want you to take it back. It's actually, this isn't what you promised. Give me my money back. So when it comes to the actual appearance of it, do your research, just like you probably have done to find this deal in the first place, but look at your, do the research. Look at what's sold recently and then also in the completed and sold items just match it up and again if it is like 50% cheaper than everything else out there probably too good to be true but then at the same time you could have lucked out just like you've seen me do many times like week in week out I'm going look what I got for 100 quid and you're like uh what how did you get that for 100 quid it could have turned out to be a fake it could have not turned up that's just the way it is. Before we go into spot five, can I just say how good that camera spot actually was? Like, that was literally meant to be. And it didn't break, so then obviously the wife is still gonna be happy. Okay, I see a beacon of hope in the distance. That looks like a very nice, well-painted, 150-yard post, ready to situate the Canon G7X, if you wanted to know. Camera on top, zero wind, Hopefully the girth of it is wide enough to withhold. What am I going on about? Oh, this is so dangerous. Okay. All right, don't worry. Mary doesn't watch my videos anymore. We're all good. And my legs hurt. We're back in the gym, by the way. This lazy, fat piece of, is getting in shape. Right, top tip number five, message me. Here's how you get hold of me. Because I hate emails. I hate typing. I hate writing. I'm dyslexic. Uh, this is why I do videos. I like videos, I don't like writing. However, I try and get back to as many of you as I can. I normally have about 10 to 15 messages from you guys a day. So if I don't do it on one day, i.e. my day off, then it keeps overrunning and then my mind blows up and then I'm just like, oh God, I don't want to even look at it. Don't do it on Instagram anymore because it's a really weird format Instagram in terms if I read it then uh, I've got to reply then and then if I don't it just gets like logged into the back. Facebook's the best place because I can read it and it will stay bold until I reply which means on my day off which is normally kind of when or in the evenings I can't do all my replies anyway it stays bold and I go to all of them and I go da da da. Don't put loads of text because again melts my mind. Just go Simon fake good whatever here's the link have a look I promise not to steal your deal It'd be very difficult, um, but I promise not to steal your deal um, and just be like, is this legit? Is this a good deal? Everything else. I'll give it the thumbs up. Great. I might actually start doing videos back. That might actually be the easiest, but I hate writing. I literally, it's why I quit the pro shop. I hate emails. I hate all that kind of stuff, but it's very important to me that I, I've got your guys back. You're the reason that I'm here. You're the reason the channel's going so well. And if I don't reply the first time, send it again. Be like, Simon, you... You're a YouTuber, you've got nothing to do. Reply to me, and then do it again. Urgent. Auction ends in a minute. Let me know. It's the easiest way to get hold of me. I'm sorry if any of you guys have ever sent me a message and I haven't got back to you. It's literally, it's not because I've been like, oh, I can't be bothered, it's literally because I've looked at it and I'm probably filming, or I'm with Mary or Blake, and then I get another 10 messages and it gets put to the back. I'm sorry, 
it's kind of why I want to set up this WhatsApp Discord group so we have a bit of a smaller community and kind of jump in and out and then it'll always have my attention. Um, uh, but top tip number five, message me or your pro or anyone that you know. If you're just starting this game, just ask someone that's a bit more knowledgeable. Um, uh, but I am there for you guys and I really do appreciate all the things that you have done for me and the channel. Right guys, there you have it. My top tips on not buying fake clubs. One, two, three, four, five. And then also very unique spots. If you, I mean, I don't think you actually realize, but you're actually getting a very good tutorial. If you're an idiot and you leave your tripod at home, you can actually make a video with the surroundings around you. The value that I provide on this channel is literally second to none. Um, guys, thank you ever so much for watching this video. Um, uh, please subscribe if you're new to the channel. Leave it a like, comment down below any questions and I'll try and get back to you. Again, Facebook, my Facebook's gonna blow up. Um, uh, and I'll try and obviously get back to you guys. Appreciate it. Have a good rest of your evening.